we will also see if the baby had delayed cot clamping and delivery. So this is an important topic and all of us should understand why it is important and how it works. So I'm going to spend a few minutes explaining this to you. Uh, normally the fetus and the placenta are on continuous uh, circulation and at any point in time 20 to 60 percent of the fetal blood volume is in the placental circulation. So this is actually blood that belongs to the fetus but due to the intrauterine arrangement part of it is circulating in the placenta. Delaying the cord clamping for 30 to 180 seconds improves the neonatal blood volume by 40 to 50 ml. And uh, delayed cord clamping is an important recommendation in the new NRP update for resuscitation. This image gives you a picture of what the placenta looks like. And if you see the one on the left hand side, the uh, umbilical cord is bringing the vessels to the placenta. It gets connected. So the single big vessel is umbilical vein. And paradoxically, it's the vein that actually brings oxygenated blood to the baby. And the two arteries are shaded blue because the arteries are going to bring back blood from the baby to the placenta. So the placenta does the important job of oxygenating the blood, removing the impurities and the excretory products from the baby and puts it through to the maternal blood. You can see the subdivisions of the vessels inside the placenta and the area which is a broad pink area is the maternal part of the placental circulation. So you can see the maternal vessels uh, giving blood to that and draining it out. And this is the area which actually exchanges the uh, material. The uh, exchange material is carried back to the placenta, I mean to the baby. This is the fetal circulation. And uh, the simple point I want to make here is that the lungs, which are the big, uh, all of you can make out which the lungs are obviously. So the lungs do not uh, get much blood flow. They don't breathe. The oxygenation is done by the placenta. So the lung is not really uh, getting as much blood flow. Only 10% of the blood circulation goes through the lungs when the baby is in the womb. After delivery, the uh, pulmonary vessels open up, the lung blood vessels open up, the lung expands and there is 50% of the circulation going through the lung after delivery, after the first few minutes of life. So when this happens, the blood which is in the placental circulation comes back into the baby or majority of it comes back. Of course, a small portion stays in the placenta, but a large portion of it after the lung opens and the circulation enters the lungs, so this blood enters the baby's uh, circulation. If we do early cord clamping before the baby breathes, uh, the portion of the blood in the placenta, which is rightfully the baby's blood, is missed out. And this blood is very rich uh, in not only iron, it's also rich in uh, hematopoietic factors and the stem cells, which help the baby in repairing and also has a long-term implication. Studies have clearly shown that in premature babies, uh, delayed cord clamping reduces the risk of intraventricular hemorrhage and the need for transfusions. This is because these babies have a relatively low blood volume. And so even 20% blood volume missing out from the baby circulation can lead to hemodynamic stress. These babies are likely to be sicker. They may have breathing difficulties. They may need ventilatory support. So considering all these factors, uh, the preterm baby has uh, more benefit in terms of uh, reducing major complications like intraventricular hemorrhage. In term babies, even though it's still a significant volume, it doesn't cause as much hemodynamic uh, uh, visibility in the first few days. So we don't see any visible benefit. And uh, the main benefit is in the long term when it improves the iron content. It reduces the risk of iron deficiency till six months of age. But as I said, there are many unmeasured benefits like the increased stem cells and uh, the benefit of having a higher hemoglobin in the beginning as well. So there is no risk of polycythemia seen because this blood volume comes uh, with I mean, uh, equal amount of plasma as well. So it's not just the cells that are coming in and the viscosity doesn't increase. There is also a slightly increased neonatal jaundice, but it is not very significant when you see the benefits. So the important points to consider in babies needing resuscitation, we have an option to wait till the first breath uh, before clamping. So the benefit is going to be more complete if the baby has taken the first breath, which results in 
oxygen entering the baby's lungs, the lung blood vessels open, and then the circulation is able to fill into the baby's blood. What do we do in conditions where there is already a high uh, uh, hematocrit, like in polycythemia, growth restricted babies in front of diabetic mothers? There is no clear answer yet, but it is safe to delay clamping at least for a period of time. Uh, stem cell collection is coming up, uh, and many parents are uh, having this option being discussed to them during pregnancy. Uh, as of now, stem cell storage is specifically approved and indicated only for the parents of the previously affected baby. So if you have a sibling with a treatable condition, you are definitely uh, suggested to collect the stem cells for your subsequent babies. So if you don't have any family history of uh, metabolic problems, collecting stem cells is more like a long-term insurance policy, which we don't know we will ever need. So at the moment, the science is not clear. So you can still try to collect the stem cells. Uh, you have uh, the paid banks are probably not the best option. You can donate to the public banks. And uh, obviously, delayed clamping uh, should take priority over stem cell collection. You may not get as much blood from the placenta as you would if you clamp early, but you're actually missing out on benefits to the immediate benefits, thinking of a possible long-term benefit which you may not need. 